welcome to the chaos sector. While I tell you, things are getting a bit shaky in this case. To be honest, the foundation was already shaky. My colleagues would say, that foundation has crumbled beneath the prosecution at this point. While they are hard at work, breaking down the current reports on the case, I've decided to retrace steps. I focus on the law more so, such as rights, violation of rights, abuse of power, unlawful activities, etc. The claim of Koberger breaking into a friend's home, with no arrest of this crime, prompted me to focus on his actual arrest. Now let me explain my theory, of how it all came about. Rewinding all the way back to the beginning, before there was an actual suspect. Yes, let's take those steps back. If you recall, the authorities were looking for a suspect, who allegedly was spotted in surveillance, driving a white Hyundai Elantra. Thousands of tips flooded the department, until, one vehicle was tracked. But, how did this specific vehicle become the suspect? The vehicle was allegedly spotted in surveillance, right? But, how did they track Koberger down, who was in another state? Let's review an article from USA Today. Quote, Police have been seeking a Hyundai Elantra connected to the case, announcing earlier in December, they were sifting through 22,000 registrations, for Elantras that met the criteria. On Friday, Fry confirmed they had found an Elantra but released few other details. Fry declined to say what information led officials to Koberger, and would not say if they had determined a motive. He said they had not recovered the murder weapon, unquote. Now, the first oddity, is the 22,000 registrations, that met the criteria, to be decreased down to one Hyundai Elantra. This is literally impossible, because there is no way to single out one person, unless you interrogate all 22,000 owners, and make sure their stories pan out. Do you understand? The authorities didn't even attempt to find the suspect, they got a quote, lead, on the suspect. This fry individual, declined to say what information led officials to Koberger. Why is this? We know who gave them the lead, and it was Washington State University Campus Police. One officer, spotted the vehicle on campus, and another spotted the vehicle in an apartment complex. Soon after, authorities had tracked him down at his parents' home, in Pennsylvania. Remember, there are still 21,999 Hyundai Elantras, driving around, right? How do you single out one white Hyundai Elantra, among 22,000 white Hyundai Elantras? They can't be different colors, because I'm pretty sure that amount would be different. There were literally 22,000 white Hyundai Elantras. From different year models, ranging from oldest to newest. And even if we focus on the year Koberger had, there's still a large enough number, to still have a wide range of potential suspects. Regardless of a so-called lead, authorities violated Koberger's rights, by arresting him, and taking him into custody. They hadn't determined a motive, nor did they have a murder weapon, but they were sure that Koberger was the killer? A police chief when asked about other potential suspects, claimed quote, that the individual in custody had committed those horrible crimes, unquote. What type of public relations is this? Do you have DNA found on a knife sheath? No you don't. If we put this into perspective, a citizen is arrested for committing horrible crimes, without any evidence the citizen did so. That is the definition of an unlawful arrest. How dare a police chief claim that, at this point, a citizen, is guilty of murdering someone? And he didn't have to make that statement, even if he believes Koberger was the killer. It's about upholding integrity as officers of the law. He should have stated, at this point, with respect to our investigation, we will not be answering questions about the suspect in custody at this moment. This depicts the police department as professional, and also, it keeps a sense of integrity for the suspect, who may be an innocent man. Remember, innocent until proven guilty. You may say, his arrest came when DNA was discovered, right? Trust me, you will come back to this analysis, and understand why it was an unlawful arrest. How can you be sure Koberger, and his white Hyundai Elantra, was the vehicle spotted fleeing the crime scene, out of perhaps, 10,000, white Hyundai Elantras? It's impossible, especially if you have no evidence, or information, to believe, or in their words, no, Koberger did it. Here is what they were supposed to do, when attempting to find the killer. Authorities spot a white Hyundai Elantra, Koberger's, which matches the description of the vehicle spotted in surveillance. They pull Koberger over, and proceed to investigate. Koberger asked, Officer, is there something wrong? The officer replies, Sorry for the inconvenience, but your vehicle matches the description of a murder suspect, in Moscow, Idaho. Koberger of course, would claim he is innocent, and doesn't know anything about it. 
but, the officer has to investigate, because he could be, key phrase, could be, the killer. The officer replies, I understand, but I'm gonna need you to cut the vehicle off for a moment, and place your hands on the steering wheel. Koberger, distraught, obliges. The officer proceeds to ask for license and registration, so he can check his background. He returns to the vehicle, and asks Koberger to step out of the vehicle. Koberger, not sure of what's going on, asked, what did I do? I haven't killed anyone. The officer replies, we will get to the bottom of it sir, just bringing you in for a few questions. If your story pans out, you'll be free to go. Koberger, a bit agitated, decides it's best to cooperate, and they head to the police station. This procedure, was not Koberger being arrested, no. The officer simply, detained Koberger, so he can ask him questions at the police station. And this is how their first encounter with Koberger was supposed to go. But of course, this is not how it went, as we know. In the scenario where Koberger is literally the killer, the authorities would pull him over. Sir, I'm gonna need you to step out of the vehicle. Place your hands behind your back for me, and proceeds to handcuff Koberger. He is arrested, and taken into custody. Arrested, held without the possibility of bail, and faced murder charges. A blatant violation of Koberger's rights. The authorities obtained a search warrant, which led to Koberger's arrest, at his parents' home in Pennsylvania. Let me say that again, a search warrant, which led to Koberger's arrest. Police seized a number of new items at the home, including medical-style gloves, a black sweatshirt, size 13 Nike sneakers, and they also took a buckle swab. They collected a few more items, as they proceeded to arrest him for the murders. Now here is the fishy part of the raid. Officers rummaged through garbage, obtaining DNA from trash. They had previously obtained DNA from a knife sheath, which was left in one of the victim's bedroom, right? They matched both DNA samples, and allegedly found a match. The fishy part here, is why didn't they just take a sample of DNA from Koberger, to see if it directly matched the DNA found at the crime scene? Well, this is where the shady detective work comes in. My colleagues have analyzed this scenario, and I will second their conclusion. The reason they didn't sample any DNA from Koberger to match what was found at the home, is because they used the DNA of Koberger's father, and then, get this, placed that DNA strand, onto a knife sheath, that was placed there, and then, report that there was DNA on a knife sheath found in one of the victim's bedrooms. Oh you think this is impossible? He was arrested December 30th of last year, right? When did they discover the DNA at the crime scene? Anyone has the official date? Don't worry, we have the receipts. Before the authorities raided Koberger's parents' home, they were monitoring his activity, dating back to approximately December 10th through the 16th. Now at this point, before any DNA had been obtained at the crime scene, nor any vital information or evidence against their target, you have authorities rounded up, following Koberger. Yet, since at this time there is no proof, his white Hyundai Elantra was the vehicle spotted in surveillance, there are at least thousands of possible killers out there. Anyway, let's find out when the DNA was discovered at the crime scene, and when the DNA was obtained at his parents' home. Let's examine together, the timeline. Quote, on December 27th, Pennsylvania agents, recovered trash from the Koberger house in the Poconos, and it was matched to DNA at the crime scene, on December 28th, the paperwork says. A single source of DNA was found on a knife sheath, that was found in the bed next to one of the victims, police said. Unquote. Now, it's easy to suggest, that authorities had already obtained the DNA prior, and went to his parents' home, and discovered the additional DNA. Yet, they wouldn't have to match his father's DNA, all they had to do was sample Koberger's DNA, right? After all, he is the killer, right? You are trying to prove he was physically there, not his father, right? But, I literally searched for the actual date, of when the DNA was found at the crime scene, and it doesn't give a specific date in the investigation. But, there are dates of each progression in the timeline of the investigation, such as November 13th, November 30th, December 16th, December 27th, December 28th, and the date of his arrest, December 30th. The reason there is no date of the DNA collected at the home, and just a report of it found, is because they obtained the DNA collected December 27th at his parents' home, and then the next day, December 28th, planted that DNA, at the crime scene. As a result? He's guilty of murder. They were so sloppy though, because the report even claims, that they matched the DNA at his parents' home on the 27th, as a match with the DNA at the crime scene on December 28th, translation here.
We collected, we collected DNA, DNA at his parents' home on the 27th, 27th then ran back ran to the crime scene, scene planted, planted the knife sheet, then, then dropped a sample, sample of that DNA, DNA on the planted, planted knife, knife sheet on the 28th, then raided, then raided his parents' home on the 30th, collected, collected, collected more so-called so evidence, evidence, and arrested, and arrested the alleged, alleged killer. killer. Mission complete. Meanwhile, all you get from the mainstream media is Koberger's DNA was found on a knife sheath in one of the victim's bedroom. This is a conspiracy. The conspirators expect the public to drool senselessly, brain dead as they soak in all the propaganda the mainstream media feeds them. This is deception on a historical level. I elaborate more here. The reason we know the DNA wasn't at the home, until it was planted there, is no report consists of the date it was discovered by authorities. In all articles, it would have the date the DNA was discovered at the home, no different than any other date provided by the authorities and the mainstream media reports. There would be a photo taken of the evidence, it would be tagged, bagged, and stamped. In other words, that stamp would consist of a date, when it was tagged, bagged, and stamped. No date of the DNA found on a knife sheath, because it didn't exist until after DNA was, okay, you get the point. Literally incriminating yourself, by reporting the process was done in reverse. But this brain fart, is due to not sampling Koberger's DNA, to match it with the alleged DNA at the crime scene. You see how this all transpired? Even within the plot, they didn't follow forensic procedures anyway. No blood samples tested from the suspect, no saliva samples tested from the suspect, no hair samples taken from the suspect. When there is a homicide, and in this case, blood was everywhere in the home, and you have a suspect assumed to be the killer, you run DNA tests on the individual, first, before collecting so-called DNA at their parents' home. The vehicle, that they were so sure was the killer's, never turned up any DNA evidence linking him to the murders. There was too much speculation, and claims, from the FBI, authorities, so-called private investigators, and the mainstream media. All that has been reported as facts, or alluded to being a fact, has never been presented or proven to the public. Dateline NBC, claimed that Koberger had broken into one of his female's friend's home, right? They don't concern themselves with the stupidity of that claim, due to there not being any criminal charges. No, they just report it as fact, and expect the public to accept it as evidence. Not realizing, Koberger would have been charged with several criminal offenses. This is why we do what we do, because sensationalism always captivates one's brain. From a legal standpoint, there will be tons of lawsuits if Koberger is found not guilty. His reputation has been destroyed, by every media outlet to date. So-called psychologist, criminal psychologist, detectives, all have painted this man out to be a monster, for the world to see. Without any shred of evidence to boot. Now, if we ask you at this point, what do you think about the DNA now? Let's review. Koberger did not contact one of the victims, because there is no proof of it. Koberger did not stalk any of those girls, because there is no proof of it. Koberger was not seen in surveillance at that home months prior, because there is no proof of it. Koberger was not seen in surveillance that night, because there is no proof of it. Koberger was not seen in surveillance at a grocery store hours later, because there is no proof of it. And the main evidence for the prosecution? Simple, Koberger's DNA wasn't at the scene of the crime, because the DNA found on a knife sheath, wasn't reported as evidence, until after they had collected DNA at his parents' home, and planted DNA at the scene of the crime. You know, I'm done, it's over. This is exhausting. I have reached my breaking point, I can't go on. Somebody, please, salvage this episode. Another one bites the dust, this is what I'm talking about. I have stated this early on, the absurdity just kept growing and growing. The more we broke the case down, the more absurd things got. I don't know what the prosecution is thinking at this moment, but exposing all of the deception, they literally have no evidence against Koberger. And I mean, no evidence, absolutely nothing. Brian Koberger has been framed for murder, and this will come out in court. We had already exposed that the DNA was planted at the crime scene, and the knife sheath. Come to think about it, that knife sheath, was conveniently left on the bed, for evidence? Well, if you want to manufacture evidence, sure, just drop a knife sheath on the bed. Mark Furman deserves to be sentenced to 25 years for a whole slew of criminal charges. He's behind all of this, by the way. Working behind the scenes, planting evidence, manufacturing a stalking narrative, and then just so ever casually appearing as a guest in mainstream media. You wretched piece of shit, oh I wish they would, never mind. This is the chaos sector.